So welcome back, and here we have, I don't know if you remember this or not, but this is something that I've had for a very long time, because of how interesting it is to me. And this I've had since the early days of my clock stuff, when I was still a bit of a bodger, I actually still am a little bit I guess. Um, but this one, uh, unlike many other ones, I sort of prioritised because I thought it was interesting, and um, uh, tried to get it working. Uh, and only yesterday I've actually probably got it working for the first time in probably a long time, I think. Now, I don't know what you might be thinking, but you might be thinking it's a bit confusing as to what this is. Uh, you can see it's called Equity. Uh, it says at the bottom there, Empire Made, and that makes me think it's made in Hong Kong. Uh, and if we look around, we can see... Oh, bloody hell. Uh, that it is like an unusual kind of, well, not that unusual at all really. The base is the most interesting part because the base is very, very similar, if not identical, to the bases used by West Clocks on their uh, 66 movement alarm clocks. The early ones like the War Alarm, the Raven, and the early Scottish ones as well. So that made me think... Oh, I wonder if this is anything to do with West Clocks. It probably is, to be honest, because um, Equity, the name you see on here, was also a name used by a company called Eastern Time Limited, which this probably is made by. And they made the aluminium movements for Hong Kong-made West Clocks alarm clocks in the 60s and 70s. You might see a few of them. Uh, they usually have either this base or the... Um, sleep meter style base with it's like a semicircle shape but yeah this is particularly interesting because it's an equity clock uh, you don't see many of those around um, but this is a very very looks to be an early example um, probably 50s I imagine uh, judging by the style of it this is bare luminous style here so I'm just you know it's not the best thing to have around but just for demonstration I'm just keeping it over there and when I first had this clock, it was literally just this thing back here and this dial on it, no hands, nothing, uh, and the bezel. Uh, still missing some parts, but I actually did get it working. And using the power of computers, I managed to create a dial for a replacement. Because you can see this dial on here is very, very, very mangled. This is how it was when I got it. Um, the paper it's made of, the card it's made of, is very thin, it's like straw, almost. And um, it's very weak and fragile, because it's old. Been exposed for so long. And as you can see, it's pretty much just turned to nothing in the middle there. I can't really use that on a clock. Um, and I thought, well, the, to make another black dial like that, it's going to take a lot of ink. Uh, and I won't be any good at luminous painting numbers. So I thought, what if I try and make a plain dial version of it? Uh, so I've blue tacked this old dial on top of the lens of the new one because I'm pretty proud of my work here. So I'll just put this on the side. Remember, I made this dial completely from scratch. Ta-da! Get that blue tack off. Yeah, um, made that dial myself on the computer. Uh, what I did was I took a scan of this one. I uh, used an online thing to reverse the colours, so... The dial was white, and these were well, a pale blue, I guess. And because they were pale blue, because this has gone um, yellow instead of white, um, I used a monochrome colour filter to make it black and white. So that's how I got those dots around the edges. And then I used a close-up picture of a war alarm, a West Clocks war alarm, off clockhistory.com. Thank you, Bill Stoddard. And... Um, he managed to take such a good photo of it that I could actually just take the photo off and use that dial for the numbers. So I cut each number out of that dial um, on paint and I just pasted them on top of the old one. And then using the pipette tool I got the colour because I maximised the contrast on this to make it so it's literally just black or white. So therefore I could get the pipette tool, pick the background colour which is white and just paint all over all of these cracks and stuff. Uh, I managed to clean up the logo. Uh, I think I did a pretty. Actually, I've actually got a spare since I printed up. Um, managed to clean up the logo a little bit. 
because uh, bearing in mind these are all scanned. I didn't have any files to work with here. And for the alarm dial, I just took the um, war alarm dial, moved it to the right place because it was slightly too uh, high up, I think. And then I removed the uh, numbers 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 8, and 10, and 11 because the original only had 3, 6, 9, and 12 on it. And I moved the arrow from the bottom to the top because it turns out, I think, I can't make it out really, but I think the arrow for the directions on the top here, compared to the west clocks which shows it on the bottom, uh, can't really make it out too well because it's just so worn out. Um, yeah, this is just, you know, this is all gone. But uh, I'm going to keep it anyway for uh, memorial sake. And here we have the repaired clock. Uh, it still does not work properly, and I'll get to that in a second. But uh, as you can see, I've got some winders for it, which are way too long, as well as the knobs. Found two screws which might fit. Uh, service for movement last night, because um, when I originally repaired it, the mainspring was broken. So I put a new mainspring in, but the mainspring I put in, uh, the only one I had that fit was this. And this is absolutely titchy. This literally has no power in it at all. I think this is an alarm spring out of a travel clock. That's how small it is. Something like that. Yeah, tiny little spring. No wonder it didn't work properly. Uh, the balance wheel was barely moving at all. So I found a chunkier spring last night, um, which was slightly smaller than a 66 spring, because um, I would have used a bigger spring, like a Smith or a 66. But um, the gap in between the plate and the great wheel was just too narrow. But I did end up finding one that fit absolutely perfectly. So I'll open it up now so you can see what it's like on the inside. And this... Um, another interesting thing is that although the base is similar to a West Clocks, the top part of this clock is much bigger, actually. Well, not much bigger, it's a bit bigger uh, in diameter than a West Clocks is. I think, let's measure it. Uh, this West Clocks is... It's um, a measurement, isn't it? Uh, I'll say... 10.7 centimeters whereas this is 11.2 centimeters so this is bigger and it's actually pretty much the same size as the top half of a smith alarm which i think is probably yeah about 11 centimeters as well 11.2 um so yeah that's that interesting combination of stuff here we got a west fox base with a large head um we got this unusual step in the back there, which I haven't seen on anything else. Because um, it's not like they just took um, a West Fox body and put their own movement in it. It's actually a whole new case here, except for the base. And the um, bezel goes on the outside, like a Smith's. This is the only spare lens I had. It's a real, you know, knackered up lens. I'll try and find a good glass one at some point. So, here's the inside. I'll just open it up. Those hands I made myself, I'll get to them in a second. Probably a bit obvious. I think this screw up here is from a Style 6 Big Ben. Loud alarm, and it just got flung all across the room because I got a magnetic screwdriver. Oh, there it is. Found it. Like that. And out we come. Right, here is the beautiful movement inside. Very small movement for this case, I think. Um, yeah, it is very small. Um, not tiny, but it is, you know, it's small. Uh, how many times can I say the word small? So this is the new mainspring I put in compared to the old one, which was, you know, tiny. Can I focus on that? There we go. Yeah. The old, the one I put in there was so tiny and it barely put any power into it at all. But now we have a good functioner. However, it is not a good timekeeper. Let's tweak that a little bit. Because, uh, I don't know why. But the uh, 
has been ticking since I, I wound it up and started it this morning again because I had to stop it for sleep because it's so noisy. Um, I'd only have a maximum of two clocks going at night time, otherwise it just I can't go to sleep at all. Um, but you can see it's telling the time at 11.32, whereas actually the time is only 7 minutes to 11. Uh, so, you know, that is not an ideal situation. Uh, so, as you can see, it's running very, 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 very fast. And I don't know whether that's down to the balance wheel being very small. I mean, it's probably the original one. But does anyone know, can anyone tell me what they think might be wrong with this thing? Uh, that means it's running ridiculously fast. Uh, hairspring was in the... Hairspring's okay, uh, I think. I don't know if it's the original or not, but it's definitely working. Do you think I'll need a new hairspring in there? I don't know. Maybe a heavier balance wheel? I mean, it's the original balance wheel, so I don't think I should need a different one. But, um, yeah, I don't know why it's running so fast. All been oiled, working very well. But yeah, a bit of a mystery that one. As you can see, um, I there's a piece of card with some writing on the back there. I used some PVA glue to stick my paper doll onto that so it's thick enough to match the original one and it wouldn't get bent up. So the hands, uh, I made these myself. As you can see, they probably look a bit strange. Uh, they are actually um, some Art Deco hands, as you can see under there. Uh, which managed to fit, the only ones I had that fit, with these uh, interesting Art Deco hands. And I put them on there, but they were number one too short, and two, number two did not match the style. And as I was going for the, you know, I'm going saying it's probably based on a raven, the dial, uh, that makes me more think it is tied with West Clocks. So it's likely that maybe West Clocks, I don't know, had something to do with this factory in Hong Kong, and they made clocks for the Asian market, but um, yeah, the because uh, the numbers match that is, the hands probably would have looked something like West Fox hands as well. So I based them off these America hands, and I got some sticky paper, and I put the hand on the back, trimmed the paper around into this kite shape, um, so there's still enough strength in the metal to border up this uh, paper because it is only paper on there. And then I coloured it black. So um, I can reuse these hands if I need to by just peeling this off, etc. Just stuck on with self-adhesive stuff. But uh, yeah, they match the dial better, I think. And the alarm hand, which are always a pain to replace, is made off um, an hour hand off an old travel clock. I think it's a Smith's. Um, which I trimmed down and pushed the edges together to make this point. Do that quite a bit. Uh, not a great use of hands, but it's a hand for a hand. And why have a spare hand when you can have a hand in use, you know? So that's that. Uh, anything else to say? Not really. I mean, equity is an unusual name for an alarm clock. Uh, yeah, it is, I guess. But, uh, yeah, for the Asian market, I don't think they'd mind too much. So thanks for watching. Um, hope you enjoy this interesting thing. And there'll be an update on it soon. As you can see, the Metamix working up there. <clears throat> and I'd like to know why it is running so fast. Because it's running ridiculously fast. It's gained about half an hour in a couple of hours. So, you know, not great.